Hi everybody, Oily here. Uh, we have the Oklahoma Prepper, Mouth Toes, Squid Load, Hawaii Volcano Squad. Uh -huh. And in the external we have Squid Load, Weetree Bonsai, Mouth Toes, uh, Eye of a KI, Dusty One, and Weetree Bonsai. That's it. Let me know. My I my eyes are a little bit squinty today. So today's topic is going to be about um, winter preparedness, ice storm preparedness for the home. Um, and Oklahoma Prepper is going to lead that up. But first, I just want to say, you know, just to keep everybody in your uh, prayers that's down in Mexico, you know, uh, that there's a lot of people that lost family members, loved ones, children. I know that's very heartbreaking for them. And then also, you know, here in Hawaii, see, it's contagious. Anyway. I didn't say anything yet. Don't blame <laughs> me when I haven't even had a chance to talk. I have you know on the brain. Anyway, oh, hey, Living Frugal and Prepping, welcome. So, and also the, the all the victims of the hurricane still having issues and flooding and stuff like that going on. So we need to keep all of them in, in our prayers I'm thankful to the good Lord, though, that Maria's turning north. Correct, Mouse Toes? It's not going to hit direct landfall here in the States? Yes. So far, we're, we're in the clear, particularly us who've been, you know, Matthew a year ago and just had Irma. So, so far, yeah. looking good for us. So that we'd be in a position to help Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Mexico City with the earthquake. And Houston is slowly recovering. Yes. Yeah, so, so far, so good. We just keep praying it to do that. Good. Well, this week, like I said, we're talking about winter preparedness, ice storm preparedness for our homes. Next week, we'll talk about some things you might want to keep in your vehicle and some things to do to your vehicles to make sure they're prepared for winter time. So, we'll keep it strictly to the home, farm, whatever for this week. So, Oklahoma, I'll let you take off. All right. Sorry, I had to turn my mic back on. Um, so, uh, it is, um, as you fellow Okies know, uh, winters here can either be very mild or very harsh, but uh, winters across the state can be very harsh. Uh, so, one of the first things we're going to talk about today is um, preparing for a uh, ice storm, snowstorm, or even just uh, power outages in the winter. Um, some of you guys, uh, you guys that were here, yes, uh, I'm sorry, yesterday, last week, we did cover quite a bit about uh, how to deal with power outages and what steps to take uh, to kind of move um, forward during that type of situation. Uh, a lot of the things are, are the same, um, however, there's quite a bit added when you get into winter weather because uh, not only is it, you know, you're just, you know, power outages in an ideal situation is very not hot, not cold, uh, you know, is just a perfect, you know, setting just to kind of go outside and have a good time and enjoy being outside. Unfortunately, during the winter, uh, that does not happen. And the reason I uh, have learned to, the reason I have learned a lot about preparing for winter storm uh, situations is because when I lived in Tulsa in 2007, I believe, we had a very, very harsh uh, ice storm. And we were out of power for 16 days. Our house was total electric. Uh, we, everything in the fridge was just absolutely ruined. Uh, and we had to throw it all out and get new. Well, uh, we, the only thing we did have. Uh, can I ask a question? If, how come you can't just, if the power goes out, take your stuff from the refrigerator and put it out in the snow? I, you know what? I never thought. Uh, you know, I, I was gonna say that. Uh, Critters. You know, at the time, I didn't think Raccoons. about it. 
yeah, there's there's this, the threat of uh, you know wildlife getting into your food, but there's yeah. also ways of uh, storing it uh, out of the way so that you know wildlife cannot get to it. But uh, you know, at the time, they just thought just never crossed my mind. The only thing that crossed my mind was find more firewood because we had a it was a manufactured home and it was fairly new i think uh, at the time it was about four years old and so it had a very nice beautiful fireplace in uh, one of the living rooms however you know the fireplace is not designed in, in manufactured homes fireplaces these these days in general are not designed for heating they are just there for aesthetic purposes you know have a good have a, having a good night and and just put a couple of logs on the fire just to kind to just to kind of give the uh, the romance uh, of the situation I guess uh, but um, I've learned that I'm not going to go through that again. <laughs> I, I do love I do love cold weather a lot more than I love hot weather. That is yeah. an absolute fact. I absolutely want to move to uh, uh, Australia, Alaska, and go off grid. Would love that more than anything else in the world. However, I am destined to stay in Oklahoma for the rest of my life. And that being said, I have learned to adapt and overcome. And what we're going to talk about tonight is some of those adaptations. Right. That, uh, real, yeah. Real quick, on the on the storing food outside, it may do okay for a little bit, but here in Oklahoma, you can have three days of icy, freezing cold, and then have a 60, 70 degree day in the middle of winter. So yes. it wouldn't necessarily work the whole time. One of the things yeah. you can do for that is to freeze like jugs fill them full almost full of water like three quarters of the way of water and stuff in the the areas that don't have uh, or the you know that has they fuller plus if the power goes out it also keeps your food cold that'll I use work big for ziploc bags i use big ziploc bags and making that's it fine yeah. too. That's containers that can be freezable but uh anyway that's one of the ways that you can deal with it and also, you could, if an ice storm is coming, you could pre-go and purchase some ice for ice chests if you need to. Um, put them in your freezer, and if it looks like the power's not going to be back on, go ahead and move stuff to ice chests and have your ice in them. You can do that as well. Absolutely. But after if I can time, add, it goes um, bad unless you don't have an, um, and if you don't have a generator, or you know, you could can those things if you need to. Yep. Cook up what you can, can what you can, things like mm -hmm. that. Hey, Faith. Hi, BC. It, Hi, Jerry. And if if I can add to that, oily too, uh, put in the external, and you need one of those thermometers, uh, because we had the ice storm in 2007 in Greenville. And I said, and we had a screen porch. Uh, that's not going to keep a raccoon out of once to come. But we put our coolers out there, and I had two of those external thermometers with the wire you set in. And just what you said, the days got warm. At first, of course, the mayonnaise would freeze, right? So that's problematic where your oil and egg separates. But you'd have to really be able to monitor it because you might be real busy in the day or helping a neighbor when it's warmer. Right. And then when it's cooler and you could have a real food safety issue. So that that definitely scares me too. Yeah. Um, but things like a gallon of milk I wasn't concerned with because you can tell when milk goes bad, right, with no problem. But, yeah, uh, yeah. other things like mayonnaise, say some, some meat you took out of your freezer. I was going to consume that within 24 hours and not any later. Just to those fluctuating temperatures yeah. scare me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Oklahoma. Sorry. That's no, you're cool. right. Um, you know that that's a good point because you know we don't know when the power is going to come back on. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration, such as, for example, food storage, uh, and, and there's several other things. But let's just start out with um, we we all know what winter storms are, what happens. Uh, just sometimes they they can 
be an ice storm, just sleet falling down. It could also be freezing rain that turns to ice later on, or even just a bad snowstorm, blizzard, uh, blizzard uh, conditions. <clears throat> and um, a moderate moderate snowfall ice and uh, rainfall a winter, basically a winter storm can range from uh, freezing rain and ice to moderate snowfall over a few hours uh, and even up to a blizzard uh, for several days uh, blizzard conditions there are two types of blizzard there are ground blizzard and then there's the actual blizzard where snow is actually falling from the sky the ground blizzard is just snow blowing from fallen snow that has already fallen and is uh, just drifting through the uh, drift, drifting through the air winds uh, winds in a blizzard are over 35 miles per hour and there's always 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 very low temperatures of course and it's not just low temperatures these are dangerously low temperatures winter storms can cause power outages that will last few days and in my case in Tulsa 16 days they will make roads and walkways extremely dangerous and impassable and close uh, close or limit crucial critical community services such as public transportation child care health programs and schools uh, injuries and deaths occur from exposure dangerous road conditions or carbon monoxide poisoning and other conditions one of the first things I want to talk about is uh, is that they can close off emergency services as well several homes burned down in Tulsa because uh, there were trees blocking the way um, for the fire department to get there with the trucks so you have to take into consideration that again just like we talked about last week with uh, the hurricanes you've got a four hour if four or five hour waiting period for several hundred thousand 911 calls or several thousand 911 calls that is very similar situation you've got uh, people calling 911 congesting the lines and then you have police departments fire departments ambulance services trying to get to your residence your area and try to take care of you when uh, the situation has gone bad so we want to take into consideration that we have to be more self-sustained self-reliant in these situations so uh, of course fire safety is one of the biggest things that we can talk about tonight uh, regarding heating and uh, electrical uh, situations around your house winter storms uh, are colder than normal temperatures and happen in every region of the country some less often and uh, less of a lengthy period than others winter storms can occur from early autumn to late spring depending on the region and in Oklahoma I'm surprised we haven't had a winter storm this over the last two months yet because it, that stuff does happen uh, first before uh, the snowstorms and the ice ice storms and the winter storms one of the biggest things you can do is prepare and that's what this video is for is to teach you guys to explain to you guys what exactly to prepare for what my experience was and, and hopefully that will give shed light into what thing what uh why I'm explaining certain things of course you want to make an emergency kit for at least three days of self-sufficiency and that is uh, obviously water food uh, flashlight and batteries and some sort you, you always want to keep extra clothes in uh, extra clothes blankets sleeping bags in that uh, kit uh, that way if you know it just hit and I didn't get a chance to get laundry done you have some stuff there available like I said earlier about the fires you gotta be sure and maintain safety of your space heaters because they are very notorious for causing house fires as a firefighter I've seen that firsthand. Uh, 
uh, always use electric uh, it, when you use electric space heaters make sure they all have automatic shutoff switches and non glowing elements remember to keep all heat sources at least three feet away from furniture and drapes and other flammable materials and there are certain what there are certain things you can do to prevent uh, pre prepare your home making sure your home is well insulated and this that particular thing can happen Oh, my cat <laughs> jumped on the window unit. That particular thing can happen uh, months in advance. Uh, that's something that you can do during the summer. It dramatically reduces your heating and cooling costs in the house, so that is always a money saver as well. Uh, weather stripping around your doors and window sills to keep the warm air inside or in the summer, the hot air outside. Make sure you have working carbon monoxide detector because work, uh, carbon monoxide is a odorless uh, gas and it is very deadly and I've had to deal with carbon monoxide poisoning as an EMT with my family members unfortunately. Keep fire extinguishers on hand and make sure that everyone in the house knows how to use them and uh, as I said before uh, have, having house fires in a very dangerous uh, winter storm situation is one of the worst things could, that could happen. We want to try to prevent that because that is uh, a situation to where you know fire departments can not be able to respond at times due to fallen trees. Uh, learn, make sure you, if you don't know how, learn how to shut off your water valves, uh, gas valves, in the case that there's gas leak and uh, make sure you know how to shut off your electrical out your uh, breakers um, absolutely there, yes uh, and, and I know there are a lot of people are very intimidated about uh, shutting off gas their gas main it is no different than shutting off your water main and case you have uh, a leak at the house there's no difference the the valve is almost the exact same it's a quarter turn valve and it uses the same size tool uh, just a quarter or a half inch wide um, a wrench or a or not a half inch about a nine sixteenths wide uh, wrench and or a crescent wrench or something like that um, of course, if there's a leak, water doesn't explode. <laughs> true. So, you know, that's why there is a safety issue there with uh, gas leaks. And uh, the, way, the way the meters are designed, they are designed to have uh, a very low sparking material built inside of them. <clears throat> so uh, just remember how to shut off your water valves. Uh, learn how to shut off your water main your gas main and your main breaker and the reason I say uh, to shut off your main breaker is in case something happens and you don't notice a tree branch fall on some lines going you know around your house that can cause a short inside and that can also cause a fire as well if the power was to be restored without you know of course without you knowing hmm. If you have a wood-burning fireplace, consider storing firewood for, uh, you know, that's just a given. If you're going to have a fireplace and if you use it regularly like I do and you're not me and actually have stored wood away for the winter, I haven't done so yet. I'm in the process of getting it ordered. Uh, make sure you have enough firewood for the winter and to prepare uh, for that situation always make sure to have your chimney cleaned and expected inspected every year if you have a wood stove and you do your own plumbing uh, to plumb that wood stove in uh, my suggestion and this is from experience and I have a video on that uh, on my channel I did not inspect my plumbing uh, 
periodically throughout the year, throughout the winter, and had a huge amount of creosote buildup inside the, uh, the, the stovepipe. Do not do what I did. Please, at least uh, once a month, check your plumbing if you do it yourself. If not, uh, for the very at the very least, prepare beforehand that when the storm gets here, that you have already ins had it inspected and cleaned out. Um, so make sure your, your chimney is clean and inspected every year, and have at least uh, one of just at least a very minimum extra blankets or sleeping bags and extra warm clothes, warm, heavy winter clothes. And of course you want, uh, like I said, a wood burning stove with plenty of firewood. And if you are very leery about having a wood stove or your state or city does not allow them because that is starting to be a law in some places, you cannot have wood burning stoves inside your house due to certain codes or uh, regulations. You can always uh, have gas lines installed, and you can have uh, gas <clears throat> gas backups installed in your house, and it's probably going to be a lot easier than having a wood stove and having to maintain it. Uh, we're not going to go into preparing your vehicle. That's for next week, but... Um, as far as outside goes, um, really quick, just just for you know having to go outside and get wood and bring it back in. One thing that you want to keep uh, close to the front door is rock salt and other de-icer, uh, driveway de-icers. But if you have pets, make sure it's pet friendly and pet safe. Uh, de-icer and rock salt is unfortunately rock salt is not pet friendly. I'm Can I jump in on that? Friendly. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so for your ice melter, if you're in a place that typically doesn't get below 15 degrees Fahrenheit, you can get away with rock salt. If you expect it to get below 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's not with the wind chill, that's just the ambient air temperature, you want to go with something else. At the very least, a blend of another uh, uh, ice melter with rock salt, which is somewhat affordable. Or you want to go with a calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, or potassium chloride uh, substitute. Now, those cost a lot more. You might pay 6 bucks for a bag of rock salt and 20 bucks for a bag of calcium chloride. But that calcium chloride will work down to negative 25 degrees. The calcium chloride is not as corrosive as the rock salt on the metal when it gets into your carpet, things like that. Now, as far as being pet friendly, I'm afraid I got no experience with, with that. I use it only because I, I do building maintenance up here in Michigan, and I can tell you that we get a lot of days, especially in January, where it is sub-zero, and rock salt will not do it. Rock salt is good if you're on a budget. Rock salt's good uh, for vehicular stuff, which I can talk about next week. Uh, and rock salt is good if you're in a place that gets between 15 and 30 at night, but it doesn't it doesn't get sub zero. But I, I I understand that some people might look and see the sticker shock and say 20 bucks for a 40 or 50 pound bag of these little white pellets. I'm telling you what, it sure beats a slip and fall. And that stuff works faster. Um, it's not good for really thick ice. It'll just dissolve. Uh, it, it might loosen it up, and then you want to throw something thicker, like the rock salt, because those are big crystals versus the small pellets. But if you spend some extra money, you can have peace of mind when you get up in the morning and it's sub-zero, and, and it's, still, uh, it's still safe to walk on. Yeah. Well, i got two things that Absolutely. nobody talked about that you will definitely need. One is a shovel. Because yeah, I was going to get to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was and the and the and the other thing is cash. Uh, when I was stuck in Mammoth, uh, I think my my vehicle was buried under four feet of snow, and uh, just opening the front door. I mean, if you want to walk uh, anywhere, if you want to go anywhere to get anything, the the driveway just you couldn't even get to to what the road. 
<laughs> it was you needed a shovel. You want then, a, yeah. you, you want a shovel and you want a broom. What I do is I take the broom for that we use in the kitchen or in the house, and as it starts to wear out, I go get a new one at the store and I put the old one outside. I've got one on the front deck, one on the back deck. It's good for cleaning off the yeah. vehicles. It can reach in, in places that you can't get with a regular snow brush. Or if you get a light dusting and you're just trying to clear it off so it doesn't melt and freeze, you right. can clear it off with that, that broom a lot better than you can with a shovel. At the end of the season, a lot of places will put snow shovels on clearance. You could pick one up, save a few dollars, and store it in your garage or your shed for, for the, the winter. And or, I mean, the, for the summer. The, for the, summer. You need, the reason you need cash on hand is because not only may you not be able to walk the streets will be just buried in snow you won't be able to make it to somewhere where there's an atm maybe the people who deliver the cash to the atm won't be able to make it to the atm and uh personally in my case i i i was uh, I, I didn't i was on a va in a vacation rental uh, half a block from the 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 ski lift in mammoth and uh, i had to I, I i had to like go uh there was no way I could make it to any store. So I would just take, I had a ski pass uh, for like a month or something. And so I just took the ski pass. If I wanted food, I would take my cash, go get on a lift, go over and ski up to the lodge. And for like five, eight, they charge like $5 for a pack of apples, uh, apple cider, uh, those little packets of hot apple cider. You mix them with hot water. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I would go up to the ski lodge and buy like five or six of those. So I could, <laughs> I would have something hot to drink all night. <laughs> um, a real quick tip is is those little uh, things that slip over the bottom of your shoes that have the spikes on them for you to be able to walk on ice. If you're if you have to take even you know just yourself, but like you know if my husband gets hurt, he's the main breadwinner in the family, you know. So I'd like for him to be able to not get injured because <laughs> that will cause issues and if um, you're in a vacation rental make sure you park your car in front of the house you're renting because they all look alike and when everything's buried in snow and and i didn't one time and they towed towed my car oh, <laughs> and no. all i could do do about it was go over to the guy who towed my car and yell at him <laughs> they towed your car because you're not supposed to park in the street during a snow emergency. No, I, they towed my car because I parked in a driveway that 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 looked just like mine, but it was actually the one next door. Uh -oh. And so I parked in some other guy's driveway, and he couldn't get into his own house. So of course oh. he towed it. But I went over and yelled at him anyway, just because I was mad. So <laughs> now, now some people might say that the bags of ice melt, or whether you go with the rock salt or calcium chloride or or blend. Uh, my favorite blend is Roadrunner. Uh, it's real easy to to notice at the store. It looks like Roadrunner from uh, Coyote and Roadrunner. But uh, some people might say that it's too heavy to lift. A 40, 50 pound bag is too heavy. They do sell smaller bags. You will pay more per pound when you get the smaller bags. And obviously, you'll be making more trips from the from the car, or from the truck, wherever you, you've got it. But you can get this stuff at the same place that you buy your rock salt for your water softener. Sometimes it'll be on display in the opening to Sam's Club when you come walking in or Walmart. You can find them at auto parts stores. They've got them in the nice 12 pound shakers. You pop open the lid. It's got a grill on it you can shake it back and forth and it helps spread out but 12 pounds will not last very far what i do is i get the shaker and then i get the 50 pound bag and i refill the shaker oh yeah hey frank can you talk about the dangers to uh older folks about shoveling their own snow if they have heart issues yeah uh, absolutely um you know and, and i'm glad uh you mentioned something squib about the uh what type what different types of um ice melt there are like i said I, i'm not sure why but uh rock salt is not uh pet friendly believe it or not and neither is the uh, potassium but the magnesium and there's a reason uh and, and i'm glad you brought up specifically roadrunner brand is that uh, is magnesium uh, does the magnesium uh, ice melt and that is pet friendly um, yeah I will I will bring up uh, it, it, that is that is a definitely good idea if if you know you've got some family members or if if you have a heart condition and and you should always take into consideration that like I said not before 911 may not be there when you need it in the situation 
in the event that uh, something bad happened. So make sure that if you can't do it or you can't get someone to do it, then just don't do it. Eventually it's going to melt or eventually someone is going to be able to do it and get you to do it. But uh, try not to do it, if at all possible. Yeah, uh, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it, your life. Absolutely. And if you have elderly people in your neighborhood and you're physically able to um, help them out or people that have health issues or little old ladies, frail ladies or whatever, help them out. You know, like my mom, she she's on her own now. You know, her husband passed. So she's a widower. The only one that did it anyway. She was the one that usually... Yeah, so you know, you know, the, the whole point, did the yard work, so yeah, the whole point of this uh, video is to prepare you to not only to stay as comfortable as possible, but also to prepare you to survive. And the last thing we want is anyone to not be able to survive through this because of you know a medical condition. For uh, you know, especially when it's something as simple as. I shouldn't do it, but I'm going to anyway. That way, you know, you can survive this ice storm. So can you explain the danger to people about going out in the cold and making their heart work really hard shoveling snow? Yes, there, there's a couple of things. You know, not only for anyone that's that exercises, you notice, you know, you know your heart rate gets elevated, but just being outside, and you don't have to be doing anything just being outside your heart is going to beat faster to pump warmer blood to try to keep your body warmer so your heart is going to pump faster and if you have a weak heart or you have any heart conditions uh, or even any possibilities of stroke or past history of stroke you know you can actually harm yourself by just being outside and that as well is not a good thing so those are some big things to take into consideration when dealing with uh ice storms uh, definitely great great point on the or great great question on that Hawaii. because yeah, there's a uh, danger of slip and fall when you're going up steps and things like that you want to make sure if you have railing on your front steps that's reinforced people will grab that railing with a death grip and if they're a little how should I say right. overweight? They'll smash right through, like and then guy. it gets worse. Yeah. Not yeah, saying it's ever happened in my house, but maybe. That's another thing. If, if just like my mom now, she's in her seventies. When she goes outside to do yard work or do anything, she takes her phone with her, her cell phone, so that if she does get injured, she has a way to get a hold of somebody. Because if she breaks a hip or something and she can't get back into the house. You need a way to communicate on your person at all times. I don't care who you are. I don't care what kind of physical condition you're in. Have a way to communicate, even if even if emergency can't get to you, maybe a neighborhood. So those numbers in your phone, make sure you keep your phone on you. Yeah. Um, a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about um, is trying to conserve as much heat as possible inside your home if you have a gas hot water heater more than likely you're going to have a gas uh gas stove gas range or you know even other gas uh, you may have a gas furnace the only thing with a central system is the blower is not going to work so you are actually not going to be able to heat anything but the furnace area um, so one of the things you can do to keep heat uh, inside your house is and not only will this benefit you as a way of bringing heat into the house but also keeping water is fill your tub your bathtub with hot water and that will provide some type of heat and another thing you want to do while we're on the subject of water is there you always one of the things you want to keep uh, make sure you have enough of is water yes it could be there could be six foot of snow outside, but it does you no good if it's frozen. Uh, so make sure you have water for uh, drinking, water for washing, and water for cooking your food. Because, you know, a lot of people, when they take into 
consideration water storage in survival situations or SHTF situations, they don't take into consideration what their what water they're going to be able to they're going to use to cook with. So remember that as well. Uh, um, real, real quick, um, say you have a small propane heater or small heater, and you're trying to keep an area warm, and it's not going to warm the whole house. You can hang up old blankets sheets, plastic uh, tarps or whatever in your doorways of that room. Keep all doors shut off for, to that room that you can and everybody camp out in that room if you need to. If you have just a small propane heater that won't heat the entire house. Um, that's, that's one of the suggestions I give. Also, if you don't have any kind of heater at all, still doing that and everybody staying in one room, your body heat that you put off will help warm that area as well so that's just a quick suggestion you know make it fun for the kids have some games that just come out during a situation like that games that come out for that different activities keep their minds off of make it fun for them even if you're worried don't show them that you're worried or scared about anything because they can't handle the stress so just make it fun Fine, have little fun flashlights, bright colored flashlights, just for them to have during for during that time, things like that, so that they feel like they're a part of it. They feel big like the adults. They get to have their flashlights too or headlamps too. Um, just some different things like yeah, absolutely. that. And bubble wrap, like Goat Hollow said, say bubble wrap, and they can just pop it whenever <laughs> they can pop yep. it whenever the whenever the lights go out or certain card games or painting just fun little activities that they can do just during that time just keeping those kids in mind um special stories things like that make it fun special snacks yeah. things like that so all right well Absolutely. i'll get back to it wasn't meaning to interrupt but just thinking no, about good. the effect of that just fun things you can also get your um your sleeping bags get them a fun sleeping bag that they can in in that area to help keep them warm as well it'll be something bright and fun for them and everybody can do like an indoor camping kind of a fun thing uh theme so anyway just some suggestions yeah absolutely um and uh <clears throat> One of the one of the biggest things, of course, uh, not only with just water, but you're gonna have you're gonna want to have some type of foods uh, stored as well. Some of the let's see, where did it go? Well, oh, I'm done. Lost it. Can talk. Who me? Yeah. You want me to talk? Yeah, if you've got. If you've got suggestions, just if let me know. Suggestions, you can talk. I posted Cause, that cause, on the internet. You know, might not have seen. <laughs> explaining about the heart issues was a big, big idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I can bring up something about cooking, I saw yes. this in uh, San Juan on a video on the Weather Channel, and it was the, um, some women were making a little fire outside, and we're talking about if you don't have propane or gas inside your house, and you're going to have to warm-up soup or your canned foods outside can, can you talk used, about can you talk about how cooking on an open fire is different than like cooking on a stove they you the ladies took two um like satellite dishes from dish network that had fallen down and used those as their windscreen remember because there's usually screaming wind uh even using a stove tech or something would need some type of screen uh windscreen for it if you're having to do it outside Yes, I heard the power was completely out in Puerto Rico, so it must. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's several ways um, to cook with. Make sure you have if you're going to have uh, foods that need to be cooked, not something you know you don't want to have uh, to be able to have to make large like a you know a normal dinner that we would have a roast or anything like that. Uh, and mashed potatoes and gravy and all that stuff. You want to keep something that is easily cooked. There are several, and and I was going to get to that. You can do There's, mashed potatoes with with the just they have those those mashed potato powder things, those Idahoan yeah, mashed yeah. potatoes where you could just add boiling yeah. water. And stir. Also, um, canning canning soups 
if you, you know, make a big thing of soup and just spend the afternoon canning that up. Soups, chilies, things like that, so that all you have to do is open them and heat them, and it doesn't take very long. Um, I also bought a bunch of containers that I'm going to um, make me up some soups uh, to put in the freezer as well because not only will they help if they're frozen in there in the freezer They'll also help keep my freezer cold But they'll also I can just pull them out and use them to heat up as a fast meal so that I can When I was trapped when I was trapped in mammoth I spent so much money on just the uh, Right at the at those lodges right by the ski lifts for for overpriced bad food <laughs> it was ridiculous but that's how i survived because you couldn't make it anywhere else the roads were just buried uh, yeah um definitely one of the things i want to talk about is when you're cooking indoors uh there are certain items that you can get you can go out and buy you can of course you can buy those small propane bottles with the uh propane stove on it or you can actually just use alcohol and uh, alcohol is very flammable, doesn't get off, give off a toxic fume such as any other things. Of course, during the winter, I love the winter because I can sit right here in my living room and I can cook. And I usually do that with the wood stove. Um, I will make foil packets. Uh, I'll put, you know, pork chop or steak or some hamburger meat some potatoes, some diced onions, uh, stuff like that in there. Season it, wrap it up, and just throw it directly into the wood stove. And a few minutes later, uh, if it's if it's a roaring hot stove, a few minutes later, uh, my dinner's done. And that's, you know, absolutely the best thing in the world. I love the feeling of being able to, you know, do that right there with your wood stove. So, but there are other things that you can do. You can go out and buy some alcohol gel I believe the company is called Sterno uh, has an alcohol gel burner that you can actually put on uh, and it doesn't it doesn't give give off an odor and it does not give off toxic fumes as well so that is another thing to consider if you are going to be doing some heavy I would call it grill style cooking like uh, grilling just do it outside it may be cold, but, you know, at least you get, you know, some really good steaks out of it or, you know, good grilled burgers, grilled chops out of it. Uh, yeah. You want to make sure you have uh, plenty of canned or dried foods, of course, and be sure to include a non-electric can opener with your supplies so that, and, and, and I would actually suggest getting two or three in case one of them breaks. Uh, because, you know, that happened to me once, and I didn't like the idea. Have at least a week's supply of food and drinking water, at the very least. I'm going to suggest myself having about two weeks uh, of a supply because I had that bad experience in Tulsa for not having power for two weeks, for 16 days. <clears throat> You've got to take into consideration, if you can get out and get anywhere, anyone... Any business that, that uh, sells anything that has to do with generating heat or electricity is not going to have anything in stock. So take that in consideration as well. So if you have a generator, the generator will be able to help you with certain things, but you have to make sure you have plenty of gasoline, plenty of fuel for your generator. Make yeah. sure you have your prescript. Uh, make sure you have at least uh, an extra supply of prescriptions, medications, in case you cannot get to the pharmacy and you are about to run out. Uh, whereas, you know, in some cases you can, uh, which is in my case in particular, I can call uh, my prescriptions in, uh, call my pharmacy and have them mail me my prescriptions because my pharmacy is about an hour away from me and they give you two weeks grace period to uh, for mailing because sometimes I can get you know if I call my pharmacy and have my uh, prescriptions mailed to me I will have one pill bottle sent three days later I'll have three more bottles in and then three days later I'll have the rest of them in so you know, I, I, I have that advantage, and some 
pharmacies may uh, provide that adv that advantage as well. And I believe last last week we talked about uh, uh, how you can order your prescriptions for a vacation uh, situation or vacation type. And if you guys want to check that video out as well, it's uh, last week's video on uh, what's doing during power outage. So. Real quick, um, on the on the storing fuel, if you store your fuel very far ahead of time for the winter for your generators, things like that, make sure you use fuel stabilizer. You don't want to add fuel whenever you need it the most. So just keep that yes, in mind. Absolutely. You know, don't wait until the, the winter storm comes. If you hear it's coming, go ahead. And if you haven't already, go ahead and go fill up, you know, Get enough to fill up your generators, fill them. You know, whatever the general time period is for your area for power outages, I would say have at least double that to be sure. And then that way you know you're set. And that's one less thing you have to try to worry about traveling out on icy roads to go get. Plus, the gas pumps may not be working if the power is out. Some places, have backup generators to pump that, and some do not. So keep that in mind. Yes. Absolutely, and I'm glad you brought out uh, brought up the uh, the thought of um, you know having you know, anticipate for double the time that your average power is out. And tells the average power any time the power went out was maybe about an hour. Again, this was 16 days without power. So you have to take into consideration that. It's not just going to affect fire, police, EMS, taxi services, stuff like that, or your own vehicle. It's also going to affect the uh, public work, public's, public works department or the electric department, and that's going to help prevent uh, the uh, utility repair crews to be able to restore electricity to that area. So uh, that's why I suggest make sure you anticipate for about two weeks. A lot depends uh, on so, you, how remote of an area you live in. I mean, uh, well, it, like when I was in Mammoth, uh, the Eastern Sierra, if you need something that they have to get from Southern California or Las Vegas, I mean, you could it will take two months at least. So <laughs> if you need something yeah. that's not common, then just – We'll see. This is – I'm talking about Tulsa. Tulsa is a large city. It's one of the largest. It's the second largest city in the state. And for them to, you know, have uh, uh, 16 days without power is very, very significant. Yeah, so, that you know, is very rare for that to happen. Yes. Um, but it did. So, so now you have to see that and prep for if that should happen again. So. Yes, absolutely. Um, as far as electronics goes, um, Again, with your generator, make sure you have extra fuel for it. However, do not rely on your generator for daily use. My suggestion is to use it as uh, as a very every very intermittently for short periods of time. That way, you know. Yes, You're my your gener food. yeah. Not only that is um, if I'm out running my generator all day just for an overnight camp trip or all night for a camping trip or just to go out and have fun. You know, my situation is not limited to I can't leave the house and go out and get a new generator at that time. This situation, you are very limited. You can be very limited. You will, you may not be able to get out and go to Home Depot or Lowe's or uh, anywhere else to get a brand new generator. a serious generator. weather event, they will all be sold out. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, I was going to say they will rush the stores. People put them on their credit cards, and they've got them. I've got a maintenance tip for the generators. Go ahead. This, this happens in Michigan a lot. A lot of people have snow blowers. The snow blowers set all summer. For snow of the year, they go to fire them up, and guess what? They don't start. The carburetor will gum up from setting. The same thing can happen to a generator, a lawnmower, a weed whip, anything that's got a, a two-stroke two engine or something that's uh, got a small carburetor. What happens is the fuel that's stored in the tank, uh, sometimes even with the stabilizer, there will be vapors that will work their way back up into the carburetor and actually form a varnish on the backside of the carburetor and start plugging up things. And... Oh. 
So uh, test your generators. Once test a month. the generator. Yeah, it, it's the same principle. Often. If you have a snowblower, you want to take it into the shop and have it serviced, or you want to service it or test it yourself before the weather hits. If it doesn't start, get it in because everybody else has taken their snowblower down there. I mean, I don't know if you all have snowblowers down there, but up here, they're a big thing. And in the fall, you you might be waiting weeks to get your snowblower back from the shop. Meanwhile, you're using the shovel. So yeah. just something to do. That's a great point squib maintenance on all of it and um, yeah. i've had to get my dogs back in and stuff but uh some of the things you know like i had told oklahoma about before the chat was cleaning out your chimneys of course cutting down dead trees trim branches dead or ones growing by power lines um cutting down those dead trees is vital because they can hit power lines they can fall on your home things like that your vehicle um, heat tape uh, for your for your water lines or extra insulation for them and kitty litter is also a good one for walkways those are some suggestions yeah absolutely and, and um, you know in some places it may not be your responsibility to in most places it's not your responsibility to keep uh, trees back from your power lines so if at all possible, routinely maintain your trees away from the power lines. And a lot so, of the uh, companies will come and trim them prior to the season for you to make sure that, if, especially if they're growing into the power lines. Go ahead and call your, um, because I, my mom actually had her power company come and cut down an old tree on her home or her power lines. So what, keep that yeah. in mind. Call them and Whatever find out. you do, do not put a ladder up on the power lines and go up there and cut them. Even if you see that heavy gauge plastic piece that sits on top of the power, they yeah. that is put in when they install it. It sat out in the sunlight for years, maybe decades. The ultraviolet has degraded it, yeah. and now if you touch it, there may be microscopic cracks and things like that in it, and it will conduct. Yeah. Don't think that you are safe up on on that. You people get killed that way. You stay off the power lines. Uh, like you said, yeah, call the power company if you can, or maybe you got a friend who works for the road commission who can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I also tip on the generators. Um, I've mentioned it before, but if there's somebody listening that hasn't heard me say it before, like Oklahoma said, you can just run them intermittently. I have two places where I can hook up hook up generators. One that goes directly to my house one that goes to our water well so with our water well what we do is turn it on up. we we always have water on hand but we we turn it on we fill up extra water for the day or we might wash a load of laundry but mainly it's on just long enough to do that we turn it back off we gravity flush our toilet meaning we get a bucket of water and and have it sitting in the bathroom to to gravity flush our toilet, just pour it directly in the bowl and it'll push it down because we're on septic. And then in the evening, we might turn it on long enough for each of us to get a warm bath. Uh, and then we turn it right back off. We don't leave, leave that running constantly throughout the day. So that's just yes, a tip absolutely. to help get fuel and still get what you need to get done done. Um, and, and the reason for that, uh, the re that, that's another good reason for having your bathtub full of water is in case you have to, you know, wash, you know, kind of scrub off a little bit uh, or having to gravi gravity flush your toilet. Uh, that is also a good idea. I want to try to wrap up as much as I can before we've got very little time left. But uh, make sure your car is full of fuel as well. That way you can use it to charge your cell phone and other devices as much as possible. Have as many flashlights, um, extra batteries, rechargeable flashlights or rechargeable batteries. Uh, that way you can be able to use your generator if you have one or your vehicle to recharge your batteries as well. Uh, let's see. There's a couple other things let's see but um as far as uh, flashlights and radios and other kinds of communication flashlights uh i have a video of a flashlight that i reviewed uh, 
think last year, uh, the e E-T-O-N, Eaton uh, Scorpion 2 uh -huh. flashlight has a hand crank on it or has a solar panel. You can just set it outside and allow it to charge that way. And not only is it a flashlight, it's also a FM, AM radio and a, uh, a weather radio as well. That way you can keep update with uh, weather conditions. That way you can be uh, a little better prepared if, you know, this – we're going to get another round of storm ice storms coming in, so be prepared for that. Uh, exactly. As far as outside, maintain your your uh, shrubs, trees, uh, stuff like that around your yard, around your house, and especially around your house and your power lines, because uh, the last thing we want is for a tree to a tree branch to fall off and come through your living room ceiling, and then all that effort is kind of gone to nothing. So, um, let's see. And heating, the best the best source of heat you can get, the safest, would possibly be to have gas backups in your house. Any other lighting, um, uh, lighting utensils, I guess you could say, uh, lighting uh Appliances you uh, you could use would be having kerosene lamps or oil lamps. They are there are uh, some amazing ones you can get now that are very safe. They uh, have certain oils that you can use, certain uh, type of fuels that you can use to light them as well. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up. I think yeah, we've got a, about a couple of minutes, but I'm gonna wrap it up right there. So yeah, we next week we're gonna talk about. Uh, making sure your uh, vehicle is prepared for the uh, weather upcoming, the winter weather. Speaking of, speaking of ice conditions, I just wanted to say that the government of Hawaii and its wisdom has decided in order to deal with a homeless problem in Hawaii to build igloos. igloos. <laughs> God. I'm, I'm not joking. <laughs> Obviously, they aren't going to make them with ice, but they are building igloos. <laughs> like like yeah, the doghouse igloo. Yeah, behind actually, the police station. Talk about being in the doghouse, huh? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's actually a very clever idea because there are so many uh, benefits to having an igloo tight. Yeah, it, 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 it isn't actually as stupid as it sounds, but it sounds so no, incredibly it, stupid I thought I would mention it. <laughs> are you saying they're just really, really small dome houses? Yeah. Dome house. Yep. Dome house. Hashtag but Dome House. We found our hashtag for the night. See, I'm not the only one. Dome House. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, well, I'm not going there. Anyway, <laughs> I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, if, if you think of anything else to go along with preparing your home for storms, then, you know, we'll, we'll pick it up next week after if we go through the kids are if your kids are trapped in the house or you're trapped in the house because of all the snow outside it's so cold you have nothing to do you can always clip click on cryptocurrency faucets and get your free cryptos i'm on uh, during this whole chat i've been on a bunch of i've just been clicking away on uh faucethub.io and satoshi heroes and a bunch of other crypto websites uh i saw that uh provident metals has a i don't know if you got the email squid but they have a uh a uh, new uh, Queen's Beast, the the unicorn of of Scotland coin, a two ounce silver coin, you can buy off Provident now. <laughs> and of course, you get yeah. three percent off if you buy with Bitcoin. So. And I tell you something, I like for power outages, ice storms, hurricanes, the itty bitty book light. So I like to keep a lot of paperbacks um, uh -huh. because you don't always be don't all want to be in your main room hovered around your ever ready lanterns right or your gas log fireplace light and you can kind of go and find your own space be alone with your book you know great idea if can anybody has some more suggestions we'll we'll pick it up next week after we do the auto we'll we'll have some time I'm sure to go over additional things that we can do for our home or different tips that we think of after this chat is over. So thank you, Oklahoma, for, for doing that for us, for, for heading up the chat. I see Mouse Toes yawning, so she's ready to go to sleep, I think. <laughs> yes. 
I got to tell you, one time when I was trapped in Mammoth, it, the, I went to the main lodge to get some food, but it was jammed full of people, and it would have been an hour, like, wait in line. So I took a ski lift over to a more remote lodge on the other side of the, the ski resort, and it was it, – it, so I skied over there, and it, and it was, like, only, like, a five-minute line. So – Things you have to do sometimes can get crazy if you're trapped in a tiny small town on the eastern slope of the Sierras where there's like, it's like 12 hour drive if you could escape the town to any place civilized. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you all for coming. Thank my panelists and thank every guest that came to, to share with us. We appreciate each of you. Love you. And if you need any prayer, let me know. Love you all. Thank God you bless. All. Stay safe and keep praying. Good night, Dome House. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Dome House. All right.